Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're going to be going over the AFC East and we're going to be looking at some AFC East free agency and off-season grades. Before we get started though, please drop a quick like and a sub on today's video. That would really help my channel grow. I'd really appreciate that. And with that said, let's dive right into the video and I hope you enjoy. So when it comes to the AFC East and offseason slash free agency grades, let's start with the Buffalo Bills and let's just take a look at what they did. They signed Mitch Trubisky, uh, they signed Emmanuel Sanders, they got Jacob Hollister, and then the big things that I really liked from them is that they they brought back Daryl Williams, John Feliciano, Matt Milano, and Levi Wallace, as well as improving the punter position by getting Matt Hack. So when we talk about grades for them, I want to give them an A minus. And the reason I want to give them an A minus is they did, I think they did a lot of things really well. For starters, I really liked how he brought the guys back for the uh, back for them that had big uh, roles with them last season. Daryl Williams, Feliciano, Milano, and Levi Wallace. Those are all huge signings. And also, especially the Bills didn't have a ton of cap space. So, you know, being able to re-sign these big players for them was absolutely huge um, as it'll allow them to continue competing um, next season. But more importantly, I think uh, something else that I really uh, like from it from them is the Daryl Williams deal, especially a three year deal worth up to twenty eight point two million dollars, um, especially, you know, coming off a, a year where it was it was a one year prove it deal for him. And he played really well. Also, I didn't think Matt Milano was going to be able to stay with them um, just because, you know, he was one of the better linebackers on the market market and he's one of the better young linebackers in the NFL. So keeping him as well as Tremaine Edmonds together is something that's also really good. Another move they made is they extended Micah Hyde, uh, but nonetheless, I like these moves. Also, getting Emmanuel Sanders on a one-year deal after he got released by the New Orleans Saints, that improves their wide receiver room. And then Mitch Trubisky, I think this is just a value contract. As a backup quarterback, he can definitely win you a game. So overall, I like the moves the Bills made, and that's why I'm giving them an A-. minus. Now though, let's move to the Miami Dolphins. And the Dolphins, um, they they made some moves this offseason. They brought in Jacoby Brissett as their backup. Uh, they signed Malcolm Brown as one of their backup running backs. Um, but more importantly, uh, you got to look at Will Fuller and you got to look at Matt Skura and you got to look at Bernardrick McKinney. Uh, those guys are going to have really uh, influential roles with the Dolphins next season. Uh, you know, Skura will probably be their starting center. Fuller will be an absolutely massive wide receiver on the outside that will help spread the field out for them. Um, and then Bernardrick McKinney will be a hard hitting linebacker who's one of the better young better linebackers. He's not really young anymore, but one of the better linebackers in the NFL um, who will, you know, replace Cal Van Noy in a way. And, and, you know, McKinney was traded for Shaq Lawson. So that was an offseason move. And also bringing in Justin Coleman. I thought these moves together uh, were pretty solid. So I want to give the Dolphins a B plus. Um, so most importantly, I think getting Will Fuller was absolutely like it was crucial because the Dolphins needed a guy who could really stretch the field out and be a really big play weapon. And Jakeem Grant isn't that he's got the speed, but he doesn't have the playmaking ability that Will Fuller has. And, you know, it's a one year deal. It's only $10 million because, you know, one of those games is going to get voided because Fuller is, isn't going to be able to play 16 games. Uh, and it's 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 worth about, you know, $10 million. So at the end of the day, I really like that move. But more importantly, I also like the McKinney move, getting a hard-hitting linebacker to put next to uh, a guy like Jerome Baker. Justin Coleman can be a really nice third corner for this Dolphin squad. Um, so overall, I like these moves. I like the Skura move on a one-year $1.75 million deal. Um, although I don't love Matt Skura, and I made a video about Matt Skura, and I kind of I kind of ripped him for two or three minutes. Uh, but nonetheless, I still think overall the Dolphins did enough uh, to add pieces to this team. Another guy, Adam Butler, getting deeper on the defensive line. Uh, you know, they have Zach Sealer there. They have Christian Wilkins. They've got a lot of defensive tackle talent um, in their 3-4 defense. So I like the moves that the Dolphins made. Uh, they got Will Fuller. That was their big fish. Uh, but overall, it was just, it was a little too much small stuff. I wanted another guy that they could really, you know, add uh, maybe a guy, a, a better center. That was really my big thing. Maybe if they'd gone after Rodney Hudson uh, or David Andrews. Nonetheless, they stay with Skura. Um, so with that said, I think, you know, a B-plus for this Dolphins team is pretty fair. Now, though, let's go to the New England Patriots, and the Patriots did a lot. Uh, and when I mean a lot, I mean a lot. They re-signed Cam Newton. They brought in Nelson Aguilar. Uh, they brought in Kendrick Bourne, uh, Hunter Henry, Jonu Smith, Trent Brown, David Andrews, Devon Godshaw, Matt Judon, Raekwon McMillan, Kyle Van Noy, Jalen Mills, all these guys, they brought in a lot. However, you know what? This might, in 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 in, in your opinion, be an A for them. It might be an A offseason for them, but for me, it's a B plus. It's a B plus. And the reason it's a B plus is because they brought in a lot 
and they brought in a, a ton of uh, a ton of talent. But I don't know how much that talent's going to really help their team, especially because they overpaid for a lot of this talent. I don't think Cam Newton is a legit starting quarterback in, in the NFL anymore, really. Nelson Aguilar is way too overpaid. $13 million per year is almost insane. Um, and then you got Kendrick Bourne, who I don't, I think it's unnecessary. I mean, if you look at the wide receivers there in New England now, they're all just a ton of N. None of them excite me. Uh, Edelman's old now. Bourne and Aguilar are questionable. Uh, you got a guy like Nikhil Harry and Jacoby Myers. None of those guys really, you know, jump off the charts. I would have much rather seen them go out and spend some bigger money on a guy like uh, maybe Kenny Galladay or Will Fuller or even Corey Davis, you know, someone who could, who could actually add some oomph to that offense, maybe even Juju Smith-Schuster. When you're paying Nelson Aguilar $13 million and Kenny Galladay ended up with, you know, $18 million, you can see kind of the, the disparity there almost. If, if you'd sign Kenny Galladay, I mean, Aguilar and Bourne versus Galladay, if I was a Patriots fan, I'd much rather have Galladay. So it's that's just another interesting thing to think about. And then the two tight ends, both of those tight ends are being paid like top five tight ends, when in reality, they're top 10 tight ends. I like the Trent Brown move. I like re-signing David Andrews. I like the Devon Godshaw move that really gives them a, a legit nose tackle. I love the uh, the Kyle Van Noy move. I think that was really smart for them. Uh, you know, this is an absolute bargain of a deal. Two years, $13.2 million. He's, he knows that defense really well. He's an absolute lethal weapon. But more importantly, I think that they overpaid on Matt Judon. I think Judon's a really good player, but I don't. I think he might be a system linebacker with the with the Ravens. And I don't know how much he has to add um, outside of that system where uh, Wink Martindale was, you know, lining things up for him. So a four-year, fifty-six million dollar deal for a system linebacker is a lot of money. And we saw what Cal Van Noy made, you know, with the Miami Dolphins, a four-year, fifty-one million dollar deal. A year later, he ended up getting cut. So yeah, that that one concerns me too. So I think a lot of these deals are going to make the team better, which is why I'm giving them a B plus. But at the same time, I think these deals are, you know, overpriced. So that's why I'm not giving them an A. Now though, let's go to, on to the New York Jets, who I'm going to be giving a C plus to. And you might think for a second, why are you giving them a C plus? They, they 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 improved the wide receiver position in Corey Davis. They improved the defensive end position in Carl Lawson. Uh, they brought in Sheldon Rankins, Gerard Davis. They franchise tagged Marcus May. Uh, they brought in some defensive backs in Lamarcus Joyner and Justin Hardy that can add some depth. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that they I don't think they did enough here, and I don't I think they overpaid for the guys they brought in. For starters, Corey Davis on a three year thirty seven and a half million dollar deal that is. That is that is a disgusting contract because Corey Davis should not be getting paid more than $11 million max. Uh, he should have been probably on a three-year $27 million deal. Uh, that's probably where he should have been. Keelan Cole, I do like that addition, but I don't think they greatly improved their wide receivers. I, I don't really know if Corey Davis is a true, legit number one. Um, and then defensive end-wise, I don't think Carl Lawson is a great you know, pass rusher. I mean, yeah, he gets pressures. He signed a three-year $45 million deal, but you can't, you can't really, you know, sign a guy uh, to a $15 million average per year contract who hasn't really had that much sack production at the NFL level. He hasn't had a ton of sacks during his time in Cincinnati. Um, he's more of a pressure guy, so I don't think you can really sign a pressure guy to a massive contract like that. And more importantly, these Sheldon Rankins and Gerard Davis contracts, I don't think are very nice either. I think Gerard Davis on a one-year $7 million deal is a little, it's that's, that's, a, that's a little high price tag for him. And Sheldon Rankins has struggled with injuries throughout his career. Um, and a two-year deal worth up to $17 million, I think is overpriced too. So I don't really know if the Jets really got a lot better. Uh, they got a lot of older guys like LaMarcus Joyner, I don't think is that good. Tyler Croft, I don't think is a great tight end. Um, so I don't really love the the, the moves they made this offseason. So that's why I'm going to be giving them a C plus. And with that said, that's pretty much going to end the video for today. Did you agree with my analysis? Why or why not? Leave your comments and thoughts in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Also, if you're new around here, please drop a like and a sub on today's video. I'd really appreciate that. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, see ya.